the Grammy goes to... New, new, new. <laughs> the new song. Lady Ada for her new, new, new song. New, new, new. It was uh, album of the, the year. Yes. So, okay. okay. Uh, welcome to the desk of Lady Ada. Lady Ada, what is on your desk this week? Okay. So um, this week, I haven't actually had a lot of time to do a lot of designing. I've just been like keeping up with revisions and like, you know, you've seen a lot. A bunch of stuff came in because there was a lot of shipping delays uh, through Asia. And so like, you know, some of our components and suppliers yeah. Um, get parts from there and so stuff was delayed so you saw like we kind of had nothing for a couple of weeks and then we had a big boost it's feast or famine as they say in the electronic biz now it is um, so uh, I thought uh, instead I could uh, design something live yeah. using parts I can get yeah because that would be fun. So we had someone... Well, first off, do you have any news or updates, Mr. No, Lee? regular week. Um, no Pedro doing show and tell, but show and tell is on uh, Ask an Engineer and lots of surprises ahead. Some cool retro photos, a bunch of coming soon. It is a jam-packed week. And uh, as always, we appreciate all of y'all and the time you spend with us. You have lots of choices. We very much appreciate supporting us. A 100% woman-owned electronics company in New York City trying to do good in the world. Okay, Lady to back to you. Okay. So, um, Design something. I've been working on it. Somebody <laughs> emailed um, today and asked, do we have something that converts a Raspberry Pi Pico to use Arduino shields? And I was actually like, well, we don't actually um, have something that would do that, but it could be a handy little board. And, um, you know, you might be able to do a bunch of it with just, like, having it through holes, so, like, it would be a mini kit um, instead of assembly, although, like, I'm now, you know, kind of thinking about it a little bit. Um, so you emailed only like a couple hours ago. Um, so I thought I would show what it would be like for me to design this and maybe Phil, you can give me like 15 minutes and then we can move on to yeah. the great search. Ready? Yeah. Set. Go. Uh, okay. So you want to go to the computer? <laughs> this is one way. It's not this. Um, well, I already have a, um, our, a Raspberry Pi Pico package. I, I don't remember whether I made this or somebody else made this. It's been a while. Um, but I have a footprint ready to go. Um, so what I actually want to do is, um, it, and it's in my libraries. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to um, take an existing board and gut it. I kind of like to do that instead of starting from scratch because I, you know, it keeps me from making uh, some mistakes, you know, over and over again. So I think I'll probably take the Metro M0, which is sort of the closest um, thing. And I'm going to copy and paste it, and I'll make a new folder called Metro Pico Adapter. And I got a lot of revisions, but I only want the last revision. Okay, so I'm putting stuff out. Um, so let's look at this Metro Express and see what I can do. So um, obviously this Metro is, is designed for, um, uh, you know, a raw chip. So I think like I would, I would like kind of take everything out of here. Um, and that would of course have to change the silk screen out, but maybe I could keep a lot of this because like all the component locations are in spots that are like, you know, the headers and the reset button um, and the micro USB port, it would be cool if I could keep them kind of in the same sort of spot. So I'm going to start by um, clearing out all that stuff. And then in the schematic, um, I'm going to just delete the, uh, well, I'm going to delete the uh, SAMD21. So gone and then I don't know maybe I'll keep the NeoPixel the SPI flash is already on the Pico so I'll delete that uh, I might keep the SWD interface because there's SWD um, RX TX LEDs I don't know power supply I don't need because the board has an onboard power supply which is cool uh, fiber power supply I might keep this on here for now um, Although it's a little funny because the U micro USB port is on the Pico. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to do there. Like, I don't know if I can do a power port selection. Like, this has to this has to go because I actually, first off, there's no host enable. There's no USB host um, on the Pico. Like, there's no host select. 
And the fuse I don't need because, you know, any fuse is already on the board. And I don't need this shield. So I'm kind of, I'm sort of deleting all the things that I don't need. Let's see what's, what's going on now. Okay, so I kind of cleared out a lot of stuff. Um, all right, so next up, I want to put the Pico there. I think I'm going to delete the ground plane. So usually I have this, for the um, streaming, I have this um, screen pretty low resolution. It's like 720p. Normally I'm like 1080p, so I would be able to see stuff a little clearer. But, okay, so... Let's now add to the schematic. First off, I'll close this little inspector because I don't need it. Let's add the Pico, which I already have the object for. So let's search for Pico. Let's see what comes up. Great. Unfortunately, everybody has boards named Pico now. It's kind of a common thing. Okay, so this is the our Pi Pico board, and where is the... Ah, in the corner. That's not a very good spot for the pickup. So, unfortunately, it doesn't look like I can make the micro USB... Well, I can kind of make it in the same spot, but I think it would be kind of sucky. So I'm going to move it over a little bit, just so I have enough room for the silk screen. So I'm going to delete the micro USB. and uh, delete the ground plane that we made for it. And then I'm gonna delete this power ground plane. And I'm going to move these LEDs out of the way. And I can always find a spot for them later. All right, so now you know, again, I, I like to have, a, you know, I want this to stick out, like this micro USB here. Um, maybe I'll move this down. I can move this down. I can move this down. And, you know, I have space for the silk screen, which is what, um, which is kind of important. Like I have, I can squish this up a little bit, but I think like now I have a good amount of space. So this is where the, um, The, uh, the Pico would sit. And then now I want to start assigning the pads. So um, the good news is um, there's a lot of IO pins. And one thing that I noticed on the, um, at least on the Philhauer Pico core is that you can't remap pins. So pin zero is pin zero. So normally I try to like map functionality, but I think it's more important to map pin um, naming because the even you know even if it's annoying to route, I think people expect D zero on a Raspberry Pi to be D zero. Um, I think there's a way to quickly make all these lines, but uh, I don't remember how to do it. Okay, so like this. Oh, sorry. This pin is D zero. This pin is D0, and this is D1, and this is D2, and these are like the GPIO numbers. So, you know, the only the thing is about the Pi 3 is like only the I squared C and the um, sorry, the analog pins are on specific pins. So these I have to kind of I'm kind of fixing on them. So. Um, this is a zero, a one, and a two. And then I'm gonna keep, you know, the naming. And then a two. Uh, the only thing that's a little sad is the, the you know, the um, Raspberry Pi does not expose um, one of the analog pins because they uh, have it connected to the, the power monitor. That's a little bit of a shame, but that's okay. Okay, so this is the ground. So let's see how this looks. Um, right, so let's go on to bare route so we can hide all the silk screen. So 
The only thing that's a little annoying is like, you know, the pins are in the opposite order than we would like would make for a nice route. But, you know, we have a lot of space. So it's, it's annoying, but it's not like the end of the world. So for example, um, you know, this is our um, D0 line. And let me see, so it's like, this is my, ooh, these holes, these holes are gonna make it a little annoying. You know, I think what I might have to do is, um, this power supply might have to get routed later because what I'll need to do is um, route around so that this uh, pin will need to go, you know, all the way around here to connect. And then this is D1. Let's move this pin out of the way too. We do not need to yet. So then this is uh, D1 and we'll route that, you know, right up against here, so it's not too bad. I just have to be careful. I just have to make sure that I can get all of the wires I want um, into this area because these mounting holes um, and uh, these pads make it so I can't really route in. And I guess I could try to route through, but this actually makes it a little cleaner anyways because, um, you know, I don't have to do any crossovers or vias. So this is kind of elegant. Like that. All right, so that's that's kind of what I'll have to do, and it's just it's just gonna be tedious. I'm just gonna have to like do all of them, and then the good news is that I can still probably put the power supply over here. It just has to be, you know, I just have to make sure that um, I, you know, I need a ground plane underneath this regulator to um, make sure it can handle like the nine volt power supply and provide enough power. So. Oops. Um, so I just have to make sure that like the ground plane I have isn't going to be cut up by that um, underneath uh, all those, those wires that are underneath. So um, I guess I could keep routing if people want or uh, if they have any questions. No, you're good. There was one question um, that I'll just ask. Uh, where can I get low profile DuPont that allows me to plug into from the backside of the PCB? I don't know what that um, that's tough. I mean, we have uh, we have slim headers that we use for some things. Like uh, we have these two by twenty SMT short headers, and these are hollow, so you can plug in from the bottom. Um, and they they you know they're surface mounts, so they they pick in place on top quite easily. And then you then you plug through. I don't know if that's the thing they were asking about. Okay, and. That's it for now. Let's, uh, let's go over to the great search. Okay. Well, I'll... Uh, okay, You're so 12 you, minutes on the dot going so people, into So people can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to keep routing this, and then when I'm done, you know, I do all the pins, and then I just have to uh, pick a few pins for SPI. Now, luckily for SPI, um, these are named pins, and so are the clock and data for I squared C. And for those pins, um, I can... Uh, I can use any GPIO, so because there, you know, there's a lot of there's actually a lot of GPIO on the the Pi, but some of them are like you know pretty high pins. So SPI will probably be like 18, 19, 20, 21. I squared two will probably be 16, 17. That'll leave GPIO 15 unused, and then you know I can have a NeoPixel or something on GPIO 14. Yeah. Um, and so it'll be semi, you know, maybe it'll be surface mount, and then you solder in your Raspberry Pi Pico. Alright, ready for you know. more? Okay. Uh, question: Thoughts on the board having a quick connection? Yeah, I might add one. I think I'd have space. So I could probably add one Okay. here. Good suggestion. All right. Uh, INA 260, ION stock soon? I, I don't know. I, I don't know when stuff's going to come Everybody wants to know. Uh, 18 months. When thing in stock. When soon. thing in stock. When is thing Conan, in stock. Yeah. Conan want thing in stock. I there agree. is a lot of uh, when will in stock be soon questions. Okay. And we don't know the answer. All right, well, All this right. is the start. So, I'll, you know, maybe I'll work on this a little bit more this week, or maybe I'll work on it a little bit more. All right, let's uh, do the great search. Ready? Okay.
The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you so much, DigiKey. This is when Lady Adafruit uses powers of engineering every single week to help you find the things that you're looking for because it is a part drought. And Lady Ada is an oasis of information that'll quench your search. See what I did there? Quench your thirst. search. Sounds like thirst. Yeah. Okay. What is uh, you the should great... really go into marketing. I uh, I might one day. Yeah. We can all dream. What is uh, the great search this week? Okay. Ada? Um, this week it's another customer request. Somebody asked us. About it was a, well, it's a request that started a, th a thought process. So somebody asked us like, "Oh, can you make a little adapter that would take um, like AAA or AA battery pack and convert it to USB C?" And so you could like plug it in to uh, something that wants USB C because we have a lot of stuff that uses USB. And on one hand, it's like you know, it's kind of like the easiest problem and also the hardest problem because you know, battery voltage, alkaline battery voltage can range quite a bit. And um, especially if you have like four batteries, it can go above five volts or below. And so, you know, the right thing to use is a buck boost converter. And um, so I was thinking about like, okay, you know, like we already stuck a buck boost and they could probably use that, but it's, it's not cheap. You know, they're, they're like, you know, 15 to $20 to have a good buck, uh, buck boost converter. And also, um, you know, they're more delicate. You know, just like you, you can break it. Um, you know, they have some limitations. They're not, you know, they're good chips and everything. Like, don't get me wrong. But I was thinking, like, ah, would be, you know, what would be an easier way of accomplishing that um, and maybe do it in a little more inexpensive way? And then I remembered that we did um, an ION NPI on e-fuses. And e-fuses are um, an interesting chip that kind of takes care of your power supply issues. It's, you know, people are used to PTC fuses or just wire fuses where, you know, if the current goes over, it'll pop. Um, same with PTC fuses, it'll it'll open the circuit so you don't get uh, too much current. But what if, um, you know, you want uh, something that's a little bit more, you know, you're willing to spend a little bit more, but you want it to do a little bit more than just over current, like under voltage, over voltage. Um, you maybe like light up something or warn you or latch when there's a failure. Um, and so e-fuses do that. So let's go to the computer and I'll, I'll show off. We did cover e-fuses. So this is, you know, I, I referenced this INMPI, um, you know, about a half a year ago. And, uh, the, you know, I, I wanted to, um, if you are more interested in more details. And what's funny is this is a part, I was like, as I was like doing the search for e-fuses, I was like, this part sounds so familiar. And it's like, oh yeah, I did an INMPI on it. But I'll show you that a different uh, e-fuse as well. Um, so this this uh, series is quite good. Um, there's there's like seriously nothing wrong with it. But um, from what I could tell, I think these fuses were only no, they did have a five volt one. Then this six three five one. Um, but there were a couple things that I noticed uh, about these. So let's look at the Nix six three five one to maybe um, make another option. Okay, so one, um, I think I remember now what it was. So this was a three amp fuse, which is which is totally fine. Um, but I also, I wanted to see if I could find one that had um, a higher range. And I think also, let's look at the data sheet. Um, yeah, this had, you know, it's not super high, but it does have an 85 milliohm RDS on. So it's, it's not, it's not low. Um, that said, this was, a, you know, this was a very good option. So I, I did look for this, but I was also like, oh, I want to see what, what other parts are available. Um, although this was, this is a pretty good one. So, uh, right. So let's go back here. So what I did is, um, you know, I just basically, cause I was like, oh, I already know a part that's similar. Um, let's look at active e-fuses and see what else is going on. So I did want this to uh, range from, again, about like 4 volts to 6 volts in, and it would kind of give me a fuse at about 5 volts output. And 5 volts output is a really common um, voltage, but let's try uh, selecting on the input to start. And, you know, I think I can go up to like 4.5 volts input, you know, something like that. That would be 
four AA batteries because if it's four um, alkalines, you'll get like seven-ish volts. And if it's uh, four nickel metal hydrides, you'll get about 4.8. So, so that's good. So let's search for that. And we got a lot of options. And um, another thing I wanted to there's, there's so there, there's a lot of options. So there's a lot of makers of e fuses. Uh, so I would recommend um, looking for all of them. Uh, most of them have pretty high currents. Um, the only issue I had is a lot of them and ones that I've used before, like I've used some of the, the TPS. Um, they're out of stock and they're like heckin' out of stock. Like I can see when this one might come back into stock, but a lot of them like they won't even tell you or it's like five years from now so i wanted to look for only ones that are in stock right now and uh, the ones that are in stock right now um you know i sorted by price and um the nist one is is in there there's also this one from st but i i honestly got a little bit uh freaked out by the flip chip because it's a one millimeter by one millimeter component and I'm like, I, I don't really want to live. I don't want to deal with a component that's that difficult to, to pick in place. Um, so I, I looked around and actually found the, the TCKE um, series and it actually had a couple of nice um, options, which made it interesting. Well, first off, there's a five amp current. There's a wide input voltage range. Um, this is the data sheet. So they have an overclamp voltage, so it's like, you know, you could feed it seven volts and it'll clamp it down for you. Obviously, you know, you can't do it too much or it'll overheat, but, um, you know, it, it will, it will, it will keep the voltage, um, active. Like you'll, you'll be able to get voltage out even if it's a little high, because like when you first turn on alkaline, you know, when you first plug in alkalines, four of them, you're going to get like seven ish volts. Um, so this will just kind of cut it down to, to six volts for you. And um, it was quite simple. It has like a rise time um, capacitor set. It has a resistor for the limit. And um, the only thing that wasn't as nice as the NIST one is that it, um, you needed to add a external, hold on, external uh, FET for reverse current blocking. Um, you know, these are pretty inexpensive, so it's, you know, you can get a FET for like five cents. So I, I thought it was still, uh, well within reason. Um, but, uh, I kind of like this and yeah, there's, there's a, uh, hysteresis on the UV low. Um, so, you know, basically for 4.1 volts, it'll turn back on and it'll turn off a little bit less than that, like 3.8. So this could be a good option for like. You know, a buck boost is the right thing to do when you want to get, you know, perfect five volts out to your device. But, you know, if you're powering, um, you like a cutie pie board or something and you're like, look, you know, I want, I just need something about four to four to six volts in and I'm, I'm okay with it being a little bit um, wiggly in exchange for the price because, you know, the cost of these is, um, e-fuses is going to be, you know, 60, 70 cents, which is a lot, you know, there's no inductors um, compared to a buck boost or two inductors. Um, there's no complexity, no big capacitors. Um, you know, it's, it's really just a, it's a safe pass through. So this can be an interesting option. You know, you have a battery port on one side and then a USB connector on the other. And then, you know, it basically just gives you like a rough voltage out. And I think as long as people are aware of that, I think it could still be an interesting breakout board. So. Um, this is the chip I, uh, I've selected for the project, the TCKE series, the 805, that's a 5 volt output e, e fuse. And that's a great search. Where in the world is that part I need? The great search with DJ All right, and then in the chat, some folks were helping each other. They found the parts they needed on different sites, so thank you, everybody, for that's being cool. good to one another. Thank you. Um, that's our show for tonight. Okay. 25 minutes on the dot. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see everybody during the week. That was Desk of Lady Ada. Bye. Back to designing electronics I for you. I hope I quenched your thirst. Yes, quench your search. <laughs>